Only time will tell. No, I don't know. Am I a hipster? Shoot as in photograph or kill? Kill. <laughs> I don't think I want to kill anybody. Maybe just lock them away uh, so that uh, you know, nobody else will, will, will read any more of your works. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. The lady who wrote Fifty Shades of Grey. I, I had to read it for, uh, for something I was working on and I lost that part of my life. I can't get it back. Um, who I would like to collaborate with? When, when you think of collaboration, it's, it's interesting, right? Um, a, a beautiful collaboration was actually um, Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. And Terry Pratchett remains one of my favorite authors, but I think if I were to collaborate on a, on a piece of prose, it would be with Neil Gaiman, uh, who is just so inventive and blows my mind every time. Uh, who do I want to write a poem to? Um, a lot of writers. I recently uh, read uh, a very beautiful short story called The Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu, and I think that book is just out, a collection of his short stories as well. And that was a magical, magical book. And yeah, I can totally see myself writing a poem to him or about that book. Yeah. I might have some kind of uh, subconscious sens uh, censorship going on, which I'm not really aware of because it's subconscious, right? Uh, but uh, in general, I write what I want to write. Um, I don't use a lot of uh, profanity because I don't see the need to. Uh, but uh, in, I have written poems about political issues, about social issues. I don't tend to write rants, which perhaps could uh, come under potential censorship, but it's just, that's just the way I write. So I tend to focus a lot on, on pop culture, on using satire and humour, and that use of satire kind of um, masks the uh, possibly deeper intent of the poem. Beard oil. <laughs> uh, notebook, pen, iPhone, um, camera, lenses, um, batteries, chargers. Um, uh, what else do I need? I don't need a lot when I'm traveling because uh, traveling for me is about observing, consuming, uh, and just being in that place and having the tools to record uh, whatever is most convenient, whether it's your phone or it's, uh, it's a proper DSLR camera or it's just a notebook. I have a Fuji X-T1 with about, I don't know, seven or eight lenses. Uh, if I have the luxury of carrying all that, I will. Uh, if not, it might be a Fuji X100S. Uh, if I want to shoot a bit more video, I have a GH3. Or if there's some budget, there's an A7R2. So yeah, different, different horses for different courses. You see, you see, hipsters, right, would, would actually um, go out to the, to the $6 uh, latte cafes on weekends, but then go back to their um, offices in the CBD on, on weekdays because they're actually bankers. Um, but I'm here on a, like a Wednesday afternoon, or Tuesday afternoon, uh, can't even tell the time, right? Um, so I don't know, I don't think I'm a hipster because, you know, I. Hipsters treat poetry as a weekend thing. I, I treat it as a daily thing. I know this is going on video, right? Oh dear. <laughs> well, uh, the hipster phenomenon has evolved to have a certain kind of uh, aura about it, but what's beneath that aura, right? And it's also about the kind of look and what people put together. 
uh, I started growing this because I started losing that. So if that's about being a hipster, then I don't know, maybe, okay, sue me. Um, but uh, I, I do what I do. Um, like I've, before the beard, I've had a goatee for like the past 15 years um, before people knew, before hipsters were hipsters, you know, so like I just do what I do.